to order. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody, uh, those of you who are new to uh, the ARB or uh, haven't been here in a while, we are now being uh, uh, videotaped. I don't know whether this is being live uh, fed or um, whether or not it's just being uh, taped for future uh, reference, but we are being uh, filmed. Okay. We will start with uh, ARB 15-94 Elk Homes, 20 North Ecker Street. Is uh, anyone here to present that? Okay. We will go to ARB 15-95 Chutney Masala, 76 Main Street, sign. Just to bring everybody up to date, um, this application was presented to us last month and there was an issue with uh, one of the signs, a uh, far eastern sign above the storefront. And it was um, uh, going to be a problem with uh, a previous agreement that uh, a previous ARB uh, made with reference to the uh, opaque covering in the window. Um, that if we were to put a sign on the, window, on the uh, storefront at that location, it would uh, start or would make a new a, a situation of uh, coverage of the window. So uh, we had asked the applicant to go back to speak with the uh, building department and try to work something out. And I believe you have done just that. Yes, I have. Okay. <clears throat> so I did bring it back to, um, and even he, he, he wasn't sure, but he recommended not doing the sign on that window and just leaving it as is because I did go up and look and the cooler is right next to the, so I would ask you even to take out that opaque covering, I mean it would be difficult. So we're just proposing the two signs as uh, shown and one on the side and the color of the columns I have sample of. Okay, you want to see that? That's the rendering, yes. I know that you had in the original paperwork from last month, you, you did call out which was which. Okay. Okay. It says on this here. Right here. Okay. Paying for the following list. This, this, this is the upper trim. The darker one is this the, the top of the, the bottom. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then that's the top part. This is right up on the paper here. Yeah. Which is which? Have you looked at these colors with the current colors on the facade? I mean, I always personally thought it was odd the way they painted the columns a different color than the cornice that wraps around. So you, I mean, you're, you're doing it just to accent it. Just to accent it. Yeah. Just to accent it. And the colors go with the whole, I think. They look okay with that maroon brown color that's on the cornice piece. Yes.
Okay. I have a motion to approve the uh, application. Uh, second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Looking forward to it being open. Thank you. Um, is the one on Croton Place in your package, or is yes, it is. That's maybe. Oh, because it's not. Is it one here? Uh, uh, street. Uh, street. Yeah. And Becker Street. That's oh. not. No matter. Uh, as soon as I get the. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, good, good, good. Thank you. We're looking forward. Thank you. Good. Okay. We'll now go to application ARB 1596, Cole Helmar, 64 Main Street, County Hawaii. This is actually for my company consultant, Hudson Electric, even though Helmar, the property manager, is filed. That's fine. Um, yeah, we need your name and, and company information. Brandon Hall. H A L L. The company is consolidated. Hudson Electric. It's fine. It says it right on the sign. <laughs> right on the owning. Put the phone number. You're right. I don't see the phone number on the owning, though. No. no, no phone number? Oh, the address 64. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it's black, warning, white lettering? Correct. have anything that shows how many inches off the ground the sign is? Does it match the frame that's there? Yeah, the, the frame's existing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the frame. color of the fabric is the same that was there before, okay. uh, which was Salon Piaggio. And uh, I think the font is the same as well. The color of the letters are all the same. Yep. It's just a different arrangement of letters. All right, all the other paperwork is in order from what Ed tells you. So uh, anybody have, uh, from the board have any questions? No. Do I hear a motion to approve the application? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We'll pick up the building permit in a couple couple days. Ed okay. will have it done. Great. We'll sign it, and then you'll be able to go forth and conquer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, Brandon. Thanks. Okay. I would like to make a second call for Elk Homes 24. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, almost 24 North Anchor. Anybody here? Two times, two, two meetings in a row, they did not show up. They probably don't know. All right, and uh, I guess now I don't see anybody here from Love and Ruling. Love and Ruling? ARB 1601. No, Meg. No, Meg, no neighbor. Oh, bummer. Maybe they don't know. Let me text them. Okay. Done. All right, so let's just do the over. Close meeting. Close meeting. Close meeting. Close meeting. No, I'm not close meeting until we get to we have our discussion. The session is part of the meeting. The DIS? Yeah. Um, okay. We'll open an informal discussion uh, with reference to our purview. Uh, when it comes to the uh, right view, 88 to 94 North Broadway situation, uh, I know we've, uh, board member. Deb Hargraves has put together a, a brief overview of of what uh, what our issues are, and I believe did you want to give give everyone time to, to, to um, read through, or do you just want to go through? Yeah, not really. I, I think yeah, I, I can I can give you just a brief overview of what I, I thought may move the meeting along. So in our discussion. Um, what I did was I took the DEIS, I have the hard copy here, and set up a letter just basically to reference some of the terminology we'll be using in order to comment on the DEIS. 
as well as to just give a brief overview so there's some context in our letter to um, the Board of Trustees on um, what we're commenting on since the DEIS, DEIS is so thick um, and there's many parts to it. So I summarized on page one the brief overview, which is again taken directly out of the DEIS and in every instance where there's a fact, I put the page reference so that um, everybody would know uh, what we are referring to and in case you have a specific comment to that section, it'll be easier for the respondent to actually respond to it. Then I also gave on page two a brief overview of the site. Again, it's taken directly from the DEIS. It just talks about the property and the existing buildings. And then the part we need to work on tonight that isn't here, but basically we just have a framework should we decide to work with it, is on starting on page four. Um, I try to identify what sections in the DEIS would pertain to something that we would review if the applicant was coming before us and t took them out of the DEIS. Now, we don't have to work with this tonight. This is kind of my framework, um, and to the extent our comments address some of these areas, I thought what I would do tomorrow is circulate a draft letter for everybody, and then um, we can see where to go from here. But um, you guys can tell me where you, where you think it's easier to start. You can either give me your comments, and I'll figure out how to plug it into different sections, mm -hmm. or we can go through, for example, design details of the main building, then go through about the, um, the siting of the building, and then go through uh, parts like such as the, the topography, the vegetation, and the slope of the building. We, we can take it section by section, or you can just give me general comments and I can try to figure out um, how to plug it in. But I know in past experience, having worked on giving comments to the DIS, that to the extent we can give the framework and the references and page numbers, we'll get a better response back from the applicant. Mm -hmm. But I'm open to suggestions. This was really, when I read it, I was taking notes as I went through it. Right. I mean, I think we can just go in the order that you're talking about, Deb. We can go right through the building and then into the, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. You tell me. Well, some of that we actually don't need to go through, but. Yeah, we can cross it out yeah, as we go. There's some of that we just don't need to go through at I, all. Yeah, I agree. I was trying to be yeah. over-inclusive as yeah. opposed to under-inclusive. Because some of it doesn't. It's so putting the cart before the horse. Okay, so why don't we do that then? As we go through it, um, and really, if we could start on page four, uh, if you think it's something that we should address, great. I'll take notes. Um, we'll all take notes, and then I'll incorporate it in a letter. But if you think it's outside our scope, or yeah. it's inappropriate, some or of it, yeah, some of it, because well, one, cart before the horse, and two, some of it's not our scope okay. at all. Fair enough, I agree with that too, because you're gonna see that yeah. as we go through it. Okay, so if we, in the interest of just trying to see how this, how we can proceed, if we start on page four. Are, are you, just so we understand, are you two fellows in the audience from the firm, so we? Yes, okay. so I, yes, I work with the shelter group, Brightview Senior Living, and this is Eric Anderson, he's our project architect. Yeah, that's what Great. we can. With ProCon, so. Great. thank you. And we're here to listen. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. Okay, great. So um, the, the first section. Um, Before we go any further, I sure. just want to let you know that if you have anything to say, I don't know if you, do you have a copy of uh, I don't. Okay. It's okay. informal conversation. So, you want to talk about so that? You're, you can be invited know, to talk. It's, 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 have you been able to read the DEIS okay. or have you looked at the DEIS? I haven't. It's, it's I, more, I've looked at the red herring that's up at the building department. It's, it's a, it's a online, topic so. that's, yeah. Oh, okay. The actual um, application isn't before us. Uh -huh. So there's not, there's really no specifics that we can actually talk on because we don't have plans. Right. So it's. I actually spoke with Mark Gilliland about it yesterday, so and he said exactly that. So. Um, just a conversation. Gail, if you do want to come up closer to us, we refer to page references. I do have, I do have it here. Yeah. Yeah. I also have all the images here. Mm -hmm. In case anybody wants to refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's let's try to see how we can do this. Um, okay, so on page four of the outline, one of the first um, series of um, I guess specifics I pulled out of the DEIS have to do with the architectural design and detail of the proposed main building. And one of the comments made by, um, I'm just going to call it the sponsor, uh, is that it's intended to emulate the character of the, uh, the village. And so a few of the comments I pulled out are as follows, that the sponsor claims to have minimized the design impacts by incorporating architectural design and details of the main building in order to maintain the existing character of the village. It argues that the siting enables the built scale and historic character that the community has been maintained. And it goes on to talk about how the, although the, in Irvington the architecture in the area is very, that this building represents early classical revival colonial architecture. 
and it argues that while the stone outbuildings are predominantly Italianate in style, the main building is designed to respect the scale and proportion of the existing building. So okay. just starting with that, um, let me just finish one sentence. Okay. But just starting with those types of comments, I, I'd like to hear whether we think it's a fair and accurate description, and if that type of description, a contemporary interpretation of a colonial revival Hudson River Valley mansion with a nod to the Italianate buildings which are on the site is a fair representation of what they're doing and if there's other comments or questions we have. All right, before we go any further, I want to make sure that, did, did everybody see the um, the scale model that from that's upstairs? Did everybody see that? No. Did you, but I understand the scale of the building. Right. Do you understand? They did a nice little... It's not as nice as what he's looking at. Sure. We just looked it up. Yeah, no, I mean, I, this is... The I model. fully nice, understand nice the scale of the building. Nice is What I'm yeah. talking about is they did an accurate representation of, of scale, mass size, right. to already buildings and what proposed buildings. You have that upstairs. Is it really heavy? Uh, I'm sure we, we don't read it down. I don't need to see it. I mean, but I don't you see haven't it. seen it at all? I don't need to see it. I, I fully comprehend the scale of the building. Have you seen it? I've seen it. Okay. Right. I mean, I mean, and would, you, would you say that that is the most accurate representation of your project so far? It's a, it's a two scale model. Two scale model. Okay. So. All right. Have you seen it, Deb? Yes, yes. And you've yes. seen it? Okay. And. I mean, it's, good, it's good just to pop in and see it at one point. I mean, I, sure. I, I think to address this, this sort of the architectural design, um, I mean, good a, to few see the a few comments at sort of that are at a broad brushstroke rather than get nitpicky. Yeah, we're not going to get nitpicky here. I get it. I get it. I think a building of this scale should incorporate more of a hierarchy in massing. Meaning, while the building has several cross gable elements that are integrated into the facade, it still maintains a very horizontal datum line in its proposed mass. So if you, if you do look at the diagrammatic plans that were part of the DIS, and you compare them against the elevation slash renderings, and, and if, for those of you that haven't watched, I think the animation is actually extremely yeah. like informative, mm -hmm. more so than anything else, mm -hmm. to go through it, you understand the building is really, it is a square donut that is, so that is fenestrated with massing penetrations that range anywhere from 2 to 15 feet, it appears. And creating a more varied datum line from the top so that it doesn't actually look like the building that's there would strengthen the design tremendously. So from the center mass that has the gaskets and then out to the side corners, and I think we understand why the project has ended up this way to maximize floor area on the fourth floor. If there is more variation and manipulation to the ridge line or cornice line, whatever we're calling that, it would drastically help the building. Secondly, in my opinion, I feel that the building is actually overfenestrated, meaning that the decoration on the building feels contrived. If we if we look at other projects that have been done by this. Um, development company, the, the that added decoration actually detracts from the village feel, because when it's just forced upon a building, it's not helping it, it's categorizing it in a moment in time that is the recreation moment in time of architecture that we're in right now, whereas if you actually simplify some of that detailing back, it will strengthen the purity of the massing pieces which I think is more respectful <laughs> to the context around the site. Thirdly, related to the fenestration, the windows in their placement are very, very regimented. What you would have seen evolve over a period of time through different architectural styles is a more irregular, varied window datum line condition, meaning either the sill or head may vary from massing element to massing element, which you've done a little bit of in the sort of ground floor corner pieces on the on the front on the Broadway elevation, which strengthens the pedestrian feel from the bottom. If you see how this building is going to be seen as people pass by, that varied sill height, whether you're getting rid of the panels below the windows, which we have a question if those are actually intended to be PTEC units or not. That's just kind of a 
Are, are they P-TECH units? They are. Okay. So you can't actually vary those. Um, but playing around with the scale itself, it just feels too commercial, too institutional, not residential enough. The fact that everything wraps around the entire space. Additionally, I think the way you have these hip dormers that sort of collide into the cross gable elements, that's a forced mass that would never have been done in period architecture. Um, again, I think it's clear why you're doing it, but it just contributes to the bulkiness and chunkiness of that fourth floor level that is compromising the aesthetic of the entire project. And I'm sure that's been the comment all in all along. Clearly, if this building was in three stories, it would have a much, much different feel and would be truer to the architectural characteristics you're trying to outline. Um, and then obviously materiality. I think it's, it's, it's very important to understand the materials when you do ultimately get to the next phase of what is the stone? Is it real? Is it fake? Is it hardy siding? Like, what? Are, how do those materials come together, and do they have somewhat of an authentic feel, or do they look ultimately applied? I think this, this town has unfortunately been sort of gouged with several recently several projects. One in the historic context that the materials just are not authentic at all. And if you're going to implement stone on a building like this and run it up a four-story mass, it needs to feel weighted appropriately to the facade and not feel like it's lick and stick stone applied to it. Um, those are just kind of over overarching comments. I think a lot of the design manipulation from an architectural <coughs> board standpoint will occur on the fourth floor because it's hard to tell from all of the any of the drawings that were provided and even in the animation, maybe it's more clear in the model that the pitch on that roof plane is essentially, it's more of a mansard condition, not a gable condition, which mimics what is currently there, which is not really that attractive <laughs> at the end of the day. And obviously you're trying to get floor areas, so it's kind of my, I don't know if I missed anything. Mm, I think you missed the uh, detail, but as you said, we're not gonna get it there. Yeah. Um, when you, set paper to pencil in this endeavor, were you, is this um, project specific to our town or are there other buildings that look this way in other Brightview properties? Right. Well, to, to speak broadly, every Brightview building we build is unique and we look at the context of the neighborhood and everything that we do. Um, but I would turn it over to Eric in terms of the design vision. That's yeah, the so you, you will not see another Brightview building that looks just like that one, I guess, to simply answer your question. But yeah, there's, there's, there's no Brightview that I know that looks like that. Some are you know, design looks second empire Victorian, a lot of them more contemporary, um, mm -hmm. some colonial, depends where it is. Were you specifically the only architect that worked on this property? Am I? Yeah. Yes. So this is your design? Well, it's a team effort, but yeah. Well, it's your design? I'm overseeing effort? the project. Okay, yeah. that's my question. Um, Although I do, I do want to add uh, that when you do look at other Brightview projects, you get a sense of the vertical impact and scale of the four-story face that many of the other ones seem to incorporate and how important the detailing of the fenestration is because some of them, you know, if this building looks like some of the other ones, it's not going to tell the story that, that this image does. I mean, this is a, a very nice rendering, right? It, it creates texture, it creates um, a palette change, but the face is still very flat and very vertical, so, particularly the way the roof line is dealt with. Back to what I was getting at. Yeah, so, so back, to what, back to what I was getting at. Um, did you, I kind of want to get a concept of how you got to where you got. Um, did you take tours around our village and neighboring village and select specifics or are you familiar? How did you get to, what I want to know is how did you get to this? Well, I think, I think 
the gem on the site is the accessory buildings that are there now. Yeah. Um, granted, we're building something much larger, but we wanted to, in some ways, at least be respectful of the buildings that are there. Uh, one of the comments we've gotten early on is, is maybe get a little farther away from those buildings to the one up on the, on the left on the north side. Right. Um, we did submit, I don't recall if it's in the DEIS package, we did submit a number of buildings that we looked at um, for design yeah. inspiration. I don't know if you guys have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so, are those within our town? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I think one's in Dobbs Ferry, Washington. So some of the pieces that you kind of, it's a big building, you know, it's big, it's broad, it's a lot. There, I noticed about one property, the property on the front, more towards the north, has a lot of verandas, porches. I've noticed in this that you kind of didn't want to add any brand of porches, something to break up that mess. You didn't want to uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there are verandas and porches, particularly along the west side facing uh, Broadway. Yeah. I don't know if it's probably it's clear. It's clear to me. Yeah, there's a They're single, all over the place. Yeah, there's a actually. single story porch, a one and two story bay windows, and some smaller scaled windows that but you But small, said. yeah. yeah. That, there's it's a, not wrapping, wrapping. No, it doesn't wrap around. It doesn't wrap like the um, the property had the wrapping porch wrapping, and you didn't you Which, didn't choose to have that. No, I, I think it's a good suggestion. It's, that would certainly help break up the mass in the corners. Well, actually, Maybe. it's just comment, not a well, not a criticism. I kind of second the thinking. The um, so if you walk, ar I just noticed this the other night in walking around the neighborhood, is that the porches. Wrapping are a glow and they are generally full face. Um, it's the saddest thing in town when someone encloses their porch and glasses yes. are in. We need the, ra the wrapping. It gives this layer and it gives it a depth. And your front porch, it's I immediately wrapped. thought of the um, the inn in Cooperstown and other sort of grand inns that have that quality to it. I think what goes along with that, may perhaps, and maybe it's better seen in this, t is. Um, is sort of a broad uh, terrace in front of there that's a little grander than what's currently there. It kind of falls off pretty quickly. Knowing that that's not the true front of the building that you go into the courtyard to get inside, why not just sort of accept that situation and make it a little bit more grand, more um, enveloping, wrapping, mansion ish. or hotel? Well, see, this is the sort of fight that's going on. It's kind of turning from a mansion to a hotel. Right? And a hotel is usually a series of buildings that have been built a big hotel like this has been built over time and it's sort of additive. It feels even more additive than this. I have found that most welcoming of structures, small or large, in our village are the ones that with the porches that wrap. And you can find them in the grand spaces and in the smaller spaces. Um, to Andrew's comment about the detail, one of the things um, I noticed was this uh, repetition of the fan above the window. I think yeah. when you repeat things like that, I think you find it that it just becomes, I don't want to say pastiche, but it loses its strength, it loses its value, and that there needs somewhere to be a kind of grander big window gesture uh, of some sort, maybe on each side, instead of being kind of one of, e one of A, one of B, one of C. Um, such as the uh, bay balcony on the um, south side, which is in kind of double pier. I mean, I understand the desire to create some sort of tracery that's on the side of the building, but it just seems a little complex and overwrought um, instead of in keeping with the sort of simple kind of, um, I don't know if it's Dutch or if it's just uh, New York yeah, style. Yeah, it's not quite Dutch. Um, the other part of New York style that I've always seen is, is there's a great deal of simplicity to it. Um, most of the windows that are historic around here are two over one. It's a pretty, mm -hmm. it's called a New York window for that reason. And I'm not saying you should do two over ones. I'm just sort of saying look at the texture of the uh, of the window divisions in some way that, as Andrew has said, that you can create some more variety. I, I um, reiterate the concern about the black mansard roof because I think we know that it's basically flat and that's not going to help um, the overall reading. Are, are you considering any um, panels, solar panels on that roof? Not this time. We have we have yeah. to date now. Geothermal? It's all rock. Not going to do geothermal in that big space? 
we would consider that currently. Really? Are the are the so all the huh. common spaces are cooled through a central system and the units are cooled even cooled by the P tech units? Yeah. yeah, typically the independent living units have V tacks and the assisted living units have uh, P tacks. I'm gonna have any way around. Yeah. I'm going to ask a harder question, which is, the, is, is there a way to, because I think the PTEX, again, create this sort of uniformity when you're, <clears throat> when you're trying to get away from it. Yeah, and then here's a bigger question. I know this, there's an idea of people being able to service Was there any thought to sort of separating the, and again, I didn't look at which ones there were the assisted and which ones were the, um, what are the independent, independent, independent living. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, especially at that courtyard, opening that up and breaking up that mass along that side, because you get, you know, you create the, the donut. Is there any right. chance of opening up the donut to break up the mass? Interesting. Uh, where would we open the donut? Right there in the middle. Where the entrance is. Yeah, the where the entrance is. Yeah, or, redu or turn that, or turn that element into a glazed. I mean, I, I don't know that. I don't. In some way to break it up because it's, it's big. It's tight to the site. This goes to site and landscaping, mm -hmm. and it's kind of. It would be interesting to divide it. That. That's interesting. It's an interesting architectural concept to divide it. I know. And service issues. Deep well. issues when you do it. You know, when you open it? Yeah, sorry. when you open it. Yeah. You got more stairs, more. Like you're almost at a bridge, but you're not quite there. up there. It's interesting. And then um, there is, you know, these these. It might, it might break up the mass a bit. You know this gray stone that you see in the area? Yeah. Right? yeah. And it's everywhere, and it's this beautiful, you like it or you don't like it, but it's something that's part of our town and a lot of these. Um, to Andrew's point and anybody's point is that it, it has to be the real stone, and maybe more of those walls and the terrace walls are part of that. And look at the, um, um, what estate is it? It's sort of tucked up in um, Matheson Park. There's one that's there that's got a, a series of walls that are kind of these big, broad, more um, uh, battered walls than just straight up and down walls mm -hmm. on the on the downside. That could look pretty harsh, Delaney. Well, if it's got no. landscaping no, no, no. that's coming off of it or growing off the top of it, that's a big part of what we're not seeing here, and I think that's important. Um, I have a totally side come. What is there any reason you didn't reopen the old gate entrance and close the one that's there now? And kind of landscape that ed, that uh, the Broadway side. You ju you took the existing road and went up. Did road. you look up the look at the old entrance, which is next to the uh, house? Further south. Off? Yeah, further south. Uh, that's a good that's a good question for the civil engineer. I don't uh, yeah. not that I'm aware of. It's, I know it's a steep grade at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we all go up. If you go up to Abbott it House, it's pretty steep. It's a steep grade. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think there was an intentional effort not to kind of interrupt that existing right. hill, the you know, mansion on the hill type look in that. Right. Well, if you so this goes to the point about the village, and I just noticed you, you notice that all those the walls are what we all love about the village when you drive down Broadway. They're everywhere, and then all of the developments that happen behind those walls. This is one of the only places where there's this huge break in the wall. Right. Yeah. Right. And that may, perhaps there's a way to bring the wall back. Bring the wall back in some form. That's interesting. Which they did, um, oh, which they did up at Tarrytown. Oh. I mean, I know the need to have visibility for people, but this is not um, what your project is up at um, on One Nineteen. You know, the one that you just finished right up at Tarrytown, up. right? Yeah, yeah. This is very just up and out. Very different than that. Very different. The way we cited that building. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Oddly, the one might give them more coverage. I know. You know, <clears throat> yeah, the one might give them. It might be a beautiful aesthetic. Well, what if the wall but, is there? But, you know, the wall might give them too much coverage right. on the site. Um, overall, about the height of the building, can anyone comment about yeah, how in Irvington it, it presently we have the code yeah. that yeah. Uh, yeah, we can't the main the code. No, no, no. But I just, I just finish. Uh, is it limits it at 35 feet, this higher structure? Well, I haven't been to many uh, planning board meetings. And any presentations from Brightview. I know that the code um, also speaks to setbacks, an increase of um, height based on, uh, I think, every 50 feet in addition to the, of a setback, it's another five foot, something to that effect. It's, it's in the code. But there is, I mean, that's how they arrived at that, that height. Um, it's not to say that anybody is living that height. 
but uh, we, we, yeah. that's how it, they got to it, from what I understand. It, yeah, it's, it's, not, some, it's not quite on our purview yet until until the well, actual zoning none of this page is, comes. Yeah, none of this is, yeah. That's why. Yeah. I, that's why this is an important. That's just kind of. It, then it's a personal feeling on how we feel about the height of the building. <clears throat> um, any other comments on elements of design or details that are included? I, I, I think it's really depth and massing variation. It's just it's very. That fourth floor is killing the whole design. Yeah. I, I would I would say it's killing it because look the scale of the dormers. They're not dormers. The rooms. Yeah. They're, they're there's, you know, it's this funny thing that happens when you, uh, what's it called, Ephesus, 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 when the, the door columns are kicked in, right, so you're playing with some perspective to make it look grander, um, Ephesus, I can't think of it, I'm losing the word. So here you have this hierarchy, right, you build the base, it's one height, it, I can read it, right, it's the same height, sort of continuous. So the lower, and this is, you know, maybe contrary to co to the, to the setbacks, but the lower portion should be taller, right, because mm -hmm. that's where the public rooms are. The top story is the attic, it's, it's the servant's yeah, yeah. area, it's a second, it's a tertiary area, and perhaps bringing down that scale will help it. Like, you know, like Navis, something like that, that we have in our own village. Yeah. The challenge is, and yeah. it's very understandable why it's done this way, is in order to create the massing variation around the building and eliminate portions of the fourth floor, it creates egress issues that you can't satisfy in a building like this. No, so it's not possible to do. But yet, there has it. This is just too. It's just too drafted out. It could be. It could be a concept party anywhere that is just dressed in this skin, and I mean, it's kind of additive massing is lost. It's here, but it's lost based on the fourth floor. Everything else is just minor deep ultimately yep. becomes detailing but which and all of that relates to the height across the entire thing it relates to the way the building transitions around onto the east side and becomes a very different architectural language and if that was ever done it would be separated by a gasket it wouldn't die into the cross gable on the south side it would have sort of a gap and it would read as though it was an added piece that was connected on a lower level when you look at this building on the north side, it begins to look believable because it's a three-story oh, concept. It's that fourth floor and those roof lines, and because it's, it, is, it is flat, even though you've done you've taken great care at creating fenestration to appear to break it up. It just still is a big, it's a big it's a big box, you know, which it needs to be from a programmatic listen, standpoint. We get that. Right. You know, not to annoy the hell out of you, but you know. Remember when we ever watched those Mad Magazine, Mad Magazines in the back page, and you know it was half and half? Check this out. See, it looks all good. <laughs> and then you do this. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you just need to breathe. <laughs> um, any other comments? Exterior design? Um, the exterior, no. no. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we can go in any order, but I was curious also yeah. if we could just uh, comment, if you would, on the parking structure that's uh, located yeah. under the main building that creates 60 parking spots. Um, in the I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I think it's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was set a precedent in our village. It is the smartest way to deal with parking. In uninhabitable spaces. Where does st the staff park there too? Yes. Okay, great. Um, again, no particular order, but comments on the landscape, landscape front yard setback. Well, in terms of the siding where it's located, I know it's meant, it's meant to be in pretty much the same location at the existing building but so um, my commentary is that if it's meant to be um, again this is whether it's a hotel or whether it's a mansion you know a river uh, one of the river town mansions if it's a hotel then that you could sort of see it being an, an open landscape that celebrates this big broad front if it's a mansion it's hidden behind trees it all they always were winding paths that led my observation of all the uh, river town 
mansions is that they were winding past that it was hidden behind. And I understand the um, practical financial needs of doing it, but it seems that it, to fill in that forward area might be a grander, a better gesture for the town. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I think it's sort of. Yeah, I agree. That's why I. I don't. Well, can I, can I just go? Yeah, on yeah. absolutely. Of course. I think typically we would not, the last thing we would want would be huge swaths of grass to be mowed. It's just not the way, right? You typically would do a practice. Right. We want to do something more sustainable. I think here, at least our impression is that the town, quote unquote, would like to preserve that big front lawn. That's, that's really the only reason why that's staying the way it is. I would make it a meadow with mowed paths and tree groves of trees and carved out seating areas so that the build the the mansion looked more carved out of the landscape rather than dropped onto it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's they, only they still do need the, uh, the present parking lot center there. No, that's the, fine. You know, that's fine. But they would be masked by a high wisping meadow rather than sort of seeing seeing them. I mean, but I having I, the lawn run right up to it. If Parkview is wants to be so sustainable, how can we do to look into other alternative energy resources? A lot of it's just financial feasibility. Expensive. Yeah, it's just, yeah. And there, we have a, you know, numerous time. sustainable design techniques. A lot of roof. Yeah, we, we have looked into it. It's, um, it's, it's all, very cost it's all rock right there. Yeah. That you're already blasting anyway. Again, it. It tells you who haven't looked at the animation. The animation actually does a very nice job mm -hmm. at documenting the landscape. It does. Um, which I. We were kind of, we were, uh, as an architect, well very impressed with the landscaping. Not huh? the building oh, in the, in the, in the animation. Yeah, the animation. But, you know, the gardens. The rendering. Oh, well, I had a question about the gardens in the back. You know, I looked at the animation too. And, you know, um, the gardens in the back, I found that was kind of puzzling to me. The, the space that is in between the um, like the walkway in the north part of the mm -hmm. building and then I guess the southern part of the affordable housing. That area didn't look so great to me. I don't know how how would you address that? Is it look it looks too sparsely landscaped? Yeah, or? it was sparsely uh, the walkways the idea that this one home that our affordables are in, and then now you're really buttressing the building. What's going on there? It just seems like it's a lot of concrete all between the two buildings. Between what two buildings? Between the existing the existing that we're turning into affordable on the northwestern it's side. It's full landscaping. Yeah. Have you looked at the planting plan? I, I did, but look look at all of the look at all the concrete. It's all plantings. I thought it was there's all walkways. There's part. It's concrete, all greenery. Concrete. I think no, it's no, no, it's got the no. Full, it's full landscaping. Really? If you look at it. Then I looked yeah. there wrong. And you have to look at the you have to look if you I mean. As part of the dance, there's a whole series of documents. It's all landscaping. I think the landscaping plan is very well done. Mm -hmm. I'm um, a little bit of disagreement about this, about the west side. Well, yeah, I don't. The, this is the north side. No, no, I'm saying the, the, the lawn. The, oh. I've already said that. Oh, right. No, up around the building, I yeah. think it's, it's actually. I still. It's so close. So when I saw the. Whatever. I'm disagreeing. <coughs> That where the existing home is, that we're having the affordables, and then it's right next to it, and it's so close to one another that it doesn't look like there's a division. Well, there's fencing also. Divided. Fencing. That's maybe that's what it is. And that's that's one of the comments we've gotten too. That uh, we're looking at that. I'm, I'm pretty Probably. sure that area is also isn't that a secure area? Isn't that your um, part of on, it on the is, east side? Yes, on that yeah. northeast corner. Right. Yeah. There's the yeah. Alzheimer's. That, yeah, that's that's, that's what I'm thinking of. As far as it's that building, it's a secure area, right? It's a secure area. Yeah, on the other side of the fence. That's fenced in yeah, low. Correct. It's it is, it is the, the, east side. Side. the northeast corner, and then it turns around, the, the, you know, between the stone building and our right. building on the north side. Is there any way to. So there's a little um, adjunct parking lot. That's for the house that's located uh, along Broadway. Is it? I would try and get rid of that. I know it's existing. It probably makes your life easier. But why not have it drop off? I know this one. That's what you're trying to do here. But why not 
have it here, tucked into the trees closer to create a pathway. Can you describe it again? I'm taking notes. Um, so there's a small um, three spot um, parking area. It's not there. It's not there. That's new. Yeah. Oh, there is no Right. Yeah. Very different. This is all new. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. You know, the, there's that path that leads out to these three parking spots tail. If that can be tucked into the trees, then maybe you have a little bit more freedom about going through this. You're creating a processional of trees, which I understand, right? Create the processional going up to it. But why, do, why isn't that a sort of break within the lawn and that you see the lawn under high canopy trees that are along Broadway, a sort of shield? It's contradictory to what you've heard from the village, but that lawn is gone after this. Yes. It's basically gone. <laughs> and I would, uh, I would urge you to think about a way to get more of that wall back. That's, that's what the village is. Irvington is as, as distinct from, say, the other river towns. Yeah, yeah coming up into there, it's a beautiful yeah. wall that hooks around. Wow. You cut back in around, you restore the whole northern, mm -hmm. north northwestern edge. The grades. I think the grades are steep, and I think there's actually visibility issues that are issues yeah. that are posed by that's the wall never gonna happen. on the side. That's why they knock them down. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Can I ask also then for just comments on the three retaining walls um, that are to be built and located around the main building, including the terraces that are eight feet wide in, back, in between the walls back. and around the back? Because you're cutting out 25 feet of granite, right? So the, that's well, why. What, it what, appears as though the project is dead in the water if they don't get that approved. Yes. <laughs> the three parallel retaining walls. The three yeah, parallel they're retaining cutting out walls. 25 feet of granite. I mean, I. I personally don't have a huge issue with them. I think it's, I think there could be a, a back and forth if the massing is altered somewhat on the building, the fourth level, on um, how that gets reconciled. So, uh, yeah. you know. so could there be garden, workable gardens? Could there be something else up there rather than just the repetition? Or putting vertical green screens up the yeah. wall what, rather than waiting yeah. for the greenery to cascade down or grow up, provide texture rather than sort of the industrial highway aesthetic of the sheer wall, add something to the wall to create a texture to allow vines and stuff to grow up. And that would also look more architecturally interesting from the, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. um, Are there any workable gardens in this landscape scheme? We can grow things, tomatoes. Oh yes, yeah. there's always gardens for the yes. residents to use. Yeah, we. Yeah. Where are those in here? Yeah. In the north side. Uh, uh, sorry, the boxes. There, yeah. There's uh, some in there's some in the secure garden, which is and there's the also some of the yeah. assisted living garden right. on the north side. Any greenhouses that are part of this? We have not done yet. No. Have you ever done them because they're very popular with people in the? It's uh, interesting. Residents. Looked into it. We've not done one yet. Um, so our town, you may not know this, but the town is known for its greenhouses. Has an incredible history with um, Burnham. Lord just, Burnham. Just Google it, Lord Burnham. We'll figure it out. Actually, the Oxcon House is about to put a Lord Burnham greenhouse back. Yeah, it's a greenhouse from Europe. Just Google Lord and Burnham Arlington. <laughs> You'll have to get enough information that they did set you back for a couple of conservatories years. like the Enid House down at the Botanical Gardens, the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, I believe. We're Lantern. all done by Lord and Burnham, which Jay is based here. It, it was, a, it it's, was now, like, it's now our library. Yeah. Really? It was sustained to Irvington um, industrially for a while. And they did on the roof of the, um, so down Main Street, the um, old headquarters building, which was just a factory headquarters. They put a greenhouse up on the roof. Which may have been there already. It was I mean, there. I think it was there. It was there. It was there. It's this wonderful addition. It was That's there. affordable housing. It's 13 affordable and low income. It's right next to our building. Mm -hmm. um, affordable apartments, many of them do have greenhouse ceilings. So they were left there. And I wouldn't have any objection. So the, the terrace in the front, and I don't know, I won't hold it against you if it's wrong, but uh, that's meant to be a place for people to sit out with tables and chairs on it right. on a nice summer day with a view of the river, right? It looks like it could be deeper. 
Yeah, it's hence, the hence the wrap around porches. Yeah, to see people hence sitting that. out there would be quite nice. I don't, I, I don't know how the neighbors feel. I really can't speak to them, but a porch which is active and full wrap of people. Around, yeah. Wrap around porches. Maybe on, it's a broader on all bow. levels. Um, there's numerous, if you do the Google Earth, there's numerous big terraces that are around various mansions. Uh, and that's a large Hudson part River. of the landscape here. Yes, but Joe Lombardi, who owns the Octagon House, mm -hmm. he's the one who just obtained the greenhouse for his property. Mm -hmm. He would be a great resource for you, I'm sure. What was his name? Sorry. Joe Lombardi. Oh, he's Joel. an architectural preservationist in Manhattan. He owns the Octagon. National and Landmark. Several, and several others. Yeah. Yeah. Other restorators National still Landmark Trust. Around the world. National so, Landmark Trust. He owns a huge terracotta building in Lower Manhattan. Beautiful. 20. You know, just. Search around. Yeah, figure it out. Well, he'd be happy. He's yeah. a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. He'd be happy to help you if you wanted a mm -hmm. reference point. Okay. Uh, any other comments on oh, the ocean landscape buffers? I think um, probably give him enough to two. On. Actually, no. I have yeah. just two more right. two more things I wanted to go through. Um, in terms of on-site lighting for the parking lots, front porch, patios, egress doors, sidewalks, anything else when you're looking at the design? Um, I don't know if there's going to be a lighting consultant. I don't know. I'm sure, there will be. Into it, but at this stage, any comments? I didn't. I didn't look at that closely. I. I imagine the elderly people will have to be well lit. Well lit. Yeah. At least for security I, at night. Yeah, and, and I think that lighting and yeah. I think that's the, the issue that the neighbors are going to take with you. Yeah. And I, I, when we and you identified some mitigation yeah. measures, but. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's more to come. Um, signage. Any comments on that proposed signage? It didn't do a whole lot of. That. And indicating on where the signs are, are, are what they're going to look like. I think only in, in the um, in one of the models that I see on the sign. Yeah, I think yeah. the site plan shows something at the entry. It shows this V. This big. This V. I mean, my I yeah, would, would say the signage along Broadway should be extremely understated, if not non-existent. I just saw a recent project where they put the signage into the wall, into a, a beautiful wall. They pulled out some of the blocks and they embedded it in there. Down the wall they don't way. have. And that way it was it was very nicely done. This was on a uh, project outside of Philadelphia, our kind of rail trail. It was uh, a cemetery they created a new entrance to. Right. Instead of putting a sign. I think to your point, Ken, the entrance should be demarcate should be marked by some sort of stone pedip that would have been characteristic of oh, the entrance. town. Bauer, and then the sign should be then pushed into Seven. that in a very subtle way. Nothing that is too commercial or institutional looking. And it looks as though it was a restored. We're kind of tired piece. of the for sale you, signs, you know. You know the bolo. You know the property. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. Have, yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. I'd love to get rid of those. You know, the bowl arts that were probably like installed by the um, Washington Irving, um, the uh, <coughs> in the Sunny northern. Side yeah, and yeah, right. The, yeah. yeah, right. So we put up bowl arts up there that were made of, you know, the granite. Check, they, check out those. They have the lights that. They have the lights in there too. There are a lot of beautiful gateways in the village, just in the, just beyond Sunnyside, that are just going into woods because the houses are gone. Some of them are Dutch inspired. Um, actually, many of them are Dutch inspired, even though they were probably done in the 20s and teens. Also done in the gray stone. There's also walls that have massive stone caps, which are probably buried under there somewhere. But they, where they, that's another characteristic much more heavy-handed than what you typically see. It's sort of, it's like the anti-Greenwich, right? You see those really finely detailed walls. These are very heavy stone that... See, it's like the new, the new uh, development, uh, it, as soon as you pass Lindhurst on the left, this is on the right, it has the gas lamps on it. Yeah, those, that's exactly what you're talking about. Oh, so that one's kind of... Well, that's, the, the, I mean, that's... Do you know that also, maybe also the ones that are... Um, I'm sure, you guys have the budget to build that here because that, those are only like twelve million dollar homes. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ones on uh, on Harriman Road, on Harriman Road, where the, cond the condos are now. That used to be a, uh, a mansion years ago before it burned down in the uh, seventies, something like that. Richmond. Uh, I had one thing about the right site plan. There was a very large drinking vessel, which is now in front of the yeah town hall. Yeah, so that, the that would be the, the centerpiece if you see all pictures of yeah, it. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. South side. I would say if if as this develops and moves forward, it's interesting. The, the as-built site plan does not show the stone walls 
of the old entrance that went up in there next to the two-story building that's going to be affordable. I think I would suggest what you propose is taking that down because it's a scar of something that will even be more irrelevant to what this project is, reuse that stone, and create another entrance on the other side so it feels as though it's integrated with some sort of wall that comes across and marks to tie back into the context. Okay. Rather than leave an old design feature that has no relevance to this and it <clears throat> drives me crazy every day I drive by because I don't really know why somebody did that. But you take it down, you can reuse all that stone and make that the entrance feature into the, into the project and regrade up around that and then the project will feel as though it's taking advantage of something that has more of a place here sort of. rather than just forced back around and flipped and leaving all the <coughs> stuff there. But the as belt isn't even accurate because it doesn't even show that. I don't know how the surveyor missed that. It seems odd. But it's not on there. I have one other question. Are they going to allow a left hand turn? No, I'm sure it's still good. under review. Yeah, I'm yeah. proposing yeah. a left out. You are proposing yeah. left out, yes. <clears throat> but you know, again, those bollards next to that Daniel Chester French. Um, sculpture is kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, last area I had down to just see if there's any comments has to do with the adaptive reuse and preservation of the three existing stone outbuildings. I mean, there are no changes proposed to no, the exterior, but is there anything else you noticed? How are you doing the uh, HVAC for that? For those? They're not. To be determined. Okay. Yeah, they're, you're not, are you? What are, you, what are your not, No air conditioning. They're not going to put no, air conditioning in them. No through the wall units. Uh, no, no through the wall units. They're okay. not going to do anything to them. Oh, all of a sudden, restore them. What? No. Well, back, you got, they you got got back, to, them. back to the HVAC yeah. units. Is there an economic model and a proposal to do that if a town told you you couldn't do those units? The through the wall units in every one's residence? I, I really think like that is yeah, that the, the, the other option would be VRS. So yeah, it's a lot right. expensive, but yeah, yeah. Because I, I think you'll have a hard time getting that approved because that really downgrades the aesthetic of the entire building. The other thing we've done sometimes on the on front face is done something different than we're doing on the back. And there's actually and there's, there's really no the assistance. On the front. There's no P tax on the front of the building. The assisted living is all on the so side. So those are just wood panels below the windows. That's not on, on the front. On the front. Yeah, on the front, those are not P tax. They would they would typically have V tax in the front of the building. Yeah. Normally, we try to make a bump out and have them face sideways, but there would typically be V tax grills on the front. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be a really hard thing to get. So I would, while you're in these early stages and going through that, because I, I think it really, really, really more than anything else devalues the aesthetic of the building. Because I can assure you that would have never been done in a period home. <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. Well, I don't think it was maybe available. That's right. the point. <laughs> um, I just, it, and it looks like you do have all of this roof space to, like, I don't know, I'm sure it's getting sucked up, but those units really make it look like a hotel. And I think that's, because they never look good. And looking at some of the other Brightview projects, like, they end up getting trimmed out with like hardy panel and the, it's just, it's not a good look. Not on your budget, huh? Nope. <laughs> 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 Unless it's in the budget, you can't do it though. <laughs> it's, I mean, it becomes a dominant aesthetic feature on the front of the building, without question. It's Any other issues or anything that you need to discuss? Or should you uh, should we be asking for comments to be uh, comments from the public? No, no comments yeah. from the public. Yeah. It's not an open meeting. Sure it is. Comments right from on. all of us to have you incorporate into your Yes, well I, what I did is I took notes. I'm gonna go back now. I just um, do a simple outline and the questions that were raised. I'll put in here, and if the questions are phrased properly, I'll just look to you guys to manipulate yeah, them. between now and tomorrow, the thing. Okay. okay. It's Friday, so we have a few days. Okay. 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 Um, this is just, our idea. Just a, a, a note. Next month, uh, because the, there's a holiday in the middle of the month, the uh, board of trustees will be using this room the same night as we are having a meeting, so we will be upstairs. As well. 
next, so next one. We could either be at one of two places. So we're either going to be up on the um, on the upper part, or we're in the uh, Tiffany room. We could be in the Tiffany room. If we're, yeah, this, you don't want to be in the Tiffany The Tiffany room, the lighting is really poor. Bring flashlights. Well, uh, the lighting in the hallway isn't great either. Much better than the Tiffany room. Is that the president's here with you? Well, their norm, their the board of trustees meeting would have been on President's Day, but they can go to the yeah. following Monday, so they can coincide. Now, that's, that's going to happen January and February this year. Say yes. I'm not here for the February break, so I can't be on vacation. So we, we will, yeah, both uh, the week after, well, actually, it's the week after President's Day. Yeah. If they're moving that meeting because of President's Day and, and because of. Guys, yeah, approve the, approve the minutes. Yes. Uh, actually, um, okay. the uh, Gail and Ken were both uh, present. Uh, do you have any other additional comments, questions? No comments. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion to motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Done. 30 signs in another box. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys.